Hi and welcome back to Free Do Hub. Today we are going to understand Wireshark, which is one of the uh, most important applications if you belong to the field of cybersecurity, digital forensics, or security operation centers. You'll have to know Wireshark. Now it helps you a lot in analyzing the packets and looking at the different uh, communications which are taking place on your network, or maybe if there is a Trojan installed on your computer and it's constantly uploading something on the internet, Wireshark is the tool to detect it. Now um, you will have to go to Wireshark in order to download it, then click on download Wireshark. You'll see different variants of it for Windows operating system 64 bit a portable version of it and Mac uh, operating system versions of it. For Linux operating system, usually it's installed on Kali Linux, but if you want to update its version, you can easily do that. Now, if you're installing it on a Windows operating system, make sure that you are going for the actual installer of it and not for the portable version of it, because on a 64-bit version, it would install a couple of other drivers and it would ask you to restart the computer so that it can actually detect all the communications which are taking place on your network. But if you're installing a portable version of it, it won't ask you for those things and maybe you'll not be able to um, collect all the data and information which is uh, required for analyzing the packets uh, so if once it's installed we'll start the application and the application would look like this one now you'll have to notice one thing in this one that you'll have to select the interface card on your computer which is active as you can see I'm connected on a Wi-Fi so it is showing some activity on my Wi-Fi network over here you can also select the network interface card from this icon over here. It would list all the network interface cards that you have. Since I have um, VMware Workstation and VirtualBox and other applications installed on my computer, that's why I can see lots of adapters over here. So since we are going to work on the uh, Wi-Fi network, I will be using my Wi-Fi over here, but keep an eye on this icon over here as soon as I'll double click on Wi-Fi, this thing would change to red. It means that it would start capturing the packets. Now, as you can see, I have selected the interface card and now it has started capturing the communications which are taking place on my computer. But as you can see that as it's capturing the packets, this thing has turned red. It means that we are in the capture mode and we are capturing the communications which are taking place on the network at the moment. Now let's try to understand the basic interface of Wireshark first. So you can see that we have some buttons over here. If I want to stop the packet capture, I'll click on this stop button. Further, we have some options over here where if we want to search in the packets that we have captured, so we can simply type it over here and search it. If we want to move to the next packet, we can use these buttons. If we want to go to a specific packet, we can click on it and enter the packet number over here. So once we'll type in the packet number, which is appearing here as 59 or something, we'll be able to go to the same packet again. And as you can see that it is capturing the traffic on my computer. But if I want to remove this color coding from here, I can click on uh, this button over here, which would turn off all the color coding. If I'll enable it again, we'll be able to see uh, the color coding, which is taking place on our computer itself. Now, uh, further, if you want to go to the end of the uh, line where we were checking the uh, different packets which are coming in, I'll simply click on this one and we'll be able to reach to the last packet over there. Now, I'll stop the capture for the time being and I'll try to show you different things which are here in this one. Now, first of all, a question is that why all these things are coming in and how can we configure the color combination of it? If you want to change the color combination of it over here, we'll go to view and then we'll click on coloring rules. Now, as you can see, there are different rules and for that they have different color combinations over there. 
If you want, you can define the color combination of it yourself by clicking on this plus icon over here and then you can define a rule, the color combination of it and everything so that if a specific packet is coming in, for example, if a penetrator is trying to communicate with your network and you, if you have highlighted that specific IP address, you can give it a different name so that as soon as they would try to access it again, it would come in a different color. So it would be really easy for you to detect that again, a communication is taking place with that party. As you can see, I clicked on a new rule and here it's asking what's the foreground color, what would be the background color of it. So you can choose all those different things in it. And as soon as there would be a communication that would take place, it would highlight it automatically. The other important setting is you'll have to enable the preferences. So you'll click on this edit, you'll go to preferences over here. And then you'll have to check the settings over here if you want to make any changes in it. Mostly it's default. Uh, but I really like to change this thing over here in name resolution where if it is capturing the packets on the network, it should resolve the transport names and it should resolve the IP addresses, etc. Now that helps us in understanding the actual name and location of the penetrator or any packet which is flowing on our network. Now once that's done, we'll press OK so that we have saved the configuration. Now the other second setting that I would change to uh, in this one is I'll go to the statistics over here and then I'll click on conversions. So here also you'll find some settings on the left hand side like name resolution so that instead of showing me the IP addresses etc or the MAC addresses it would show me the name of the device and then I'll even collect, uh, select on the absolute start time and the limit to display the filters etc but these two options are, filter, are optional if you want to do it but I would highly recommend to keep this thing name resolution enabled on your Wireshark. Now there will be some IP addresses and stuff for which you need to find certain information on the internet. Now if you want to get the details about any specific packet, for example, I'll double click on this thing and it would open up this window where we'll be able to see the protocols, whether it is HTTP, HTTPS, what's the length of it, internet protocol version 6, ethernet connection, frame length and all those different things. Now you really want to indicate that the uh, IP address belongs to which country and uh, where is it coming from. So in order to get all those details, you can go to MaxMind website and you'll click on products and you'll go to IP uh, geolocation and intelligence etc. Uh, you'll have to download their geo IP databases from here with the help of which you will be able to use their databases for 30 days on Wireshark and it would exactly locate the address of the penetrator's IP address. Of course you'll have to sign up over here where they'll give you a 30 days trial period. You can download the databases, add it on your Wireshark and you'll be able to use it. So now the question is that where we'll post the map. So we'll go to edit, we'll go to preferences and then we'll click on name resolution where we selected these things earlier. You can find this thing MaxMind database directories. You, you can download it, maybe you can put it on your documents or anywhere else, give it a path of it and you will be able to trace the exact locations of the IP addresses. Now if we'll scroll down to the different packets which are over here, we'll be able to see the things over here. For example, what was the content in this packet and if we'll uh, just keep on moving, you can see the hexadecimal characters for this one appearing on this one where you can read some information in some of the packets whereas you cannot read the information about the other packets. Now if you want to filter these packets based on their protocols, you can type it ARP for example for the protocol. If it turns green, it means that it has certain things which has the ARP for certain things and you'll be able to find that. If I want to do it for ICMP, I'll be able to find ICMP command. As you can see, some of them are taking place on the network. So we can filter them based on the protocols, how we want to distinguish the traffic on the computer network. Now, if you like to close it, it would ask you that if you would like to save the communication of it or not. If you want to save the packet capture that you did, you can save it and you can open it again and browse through the contents of it whenever you would like to. Now, if I would start 
if, if I would like to start a communication or if I would like to capture the packets again, maybe I'll have to save this file and I'll have to start a new one so that I can start a new packet capture of the communication which is taking place on our network. So now I would show you that how can we actually capture a uh, non-secure communication which is taking place on our network. For example, if you are using HTTP websites and you are not using HTTPS websites which are secure, anyone can detect the packets or can capture it from the network and they can actually see what username and password you passed on on the computer. Now as you can see I have a website open over here which is a normal HTTP website which is not secure as you can see over here it is showing that this communication on this website is not secure since there is no security certificate on it and rest of the things so if you would like to see that I'll have to start a new capture over here and it would ask you that would you like to save it I would say no I don't want to capture I don't want to save it or if you want to save it you can continue on this one now it's capturing the communication which is taking place on the network now if you'd like to refresh it it would keep note of the website that we are accessing and then I'll pass in the username as test and the password and test and I would log in so I'm logged into this one so it has captured the communication which took place on this specific website then I'll stop the communication over here now since we were capturing the traffic on our website now we don't know that where to start and where to look for the website on which we want to see the username and password so as you know that it was an http website so on the filter i'll type here http and i'll press enter so only that communication would be shown up here which was an http communication now here as you can see in the first one it's saying that it's going to login.php and you'll have to keep an eye on this corner of it where if you can see any communication or a username and password over here. So we'll check the second packet over here and see if we can find something in it. And uh, I'll scroll the information we couldn't find in this one. Then in the post, if we are going down and here, as you can see, username test and the password is test shown up here. It means that it has captured the username and password which was passed on the network. Now, if you want to see it, since you saw it over here, and if you want to follow the stream, you can right click on the packet and click on the option over here, which says follow and TCP stream. And once it would open, you'll have to focus on the username and password, which was test test. And as you can see, it has captured the username as username test and the password as test over here so we can even check it that it is being logged and anyone who is sniffing the network would be able to get your username and password which is passed on to the network same thing goes for FTP communication and telnet communications which are flowing on the network so with the help of these things you'll be able to easily capture the communication which is taking place on the network that's why it's highly recommended to use the secure protocols on the network so that our communication which is taking place on the network is secure now just like we search for the HTTP traffic, if you want to search a specific IP address, I'll type in IP.ADDR and as you can see it's highlighting in green it means that this kind of command is allowed on this one. You'll have a space as it was showing you earlier, you'll have double equal signs and then you'll type the IP address for example. 192.168.0.12 it means if it turned green that it has found some communications which was which were captured in this packet capture so you'll press enter so you'll be able to see all communications which took place with this IP address and it is listed over here so that's how we use Wireshark for some basic communications this is just for the daily use if you'll go on the capture and analyze and then statistics etc you'll be able to find lots of options in it even if it has captured the credentials for a specific thing or a website that you were focusing it will be able to list all those things over here so that was a very short easy tutorial on wireshark i hope you understood if you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comment section that's it for today thank you very much